वेलकम आई एम योर होस्ट अदिति सिंह एंड यू वॉचिंग माई इंडिया Once the leading importer of healthcare devices, India is now striving to develop its medtech ecosystem, positioning itself as a major contributor to the global economy. And with the country emphasizing startups following the Make in India initiatives, manufacturers are getting both favorable environmental conditions and significant foreign investments to develop its in-house devices. Let's delve into India's journey towards more affordable healthcare solutions. Pooja Goswami leads Ramja Geno Sensor, a New Delhi-based medtech startup with 50 to 60 members. Founded in 2019 and supported by Startup India and Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, it is India's first company using advanced technology for infection detection and antimicrobial resistance. Ramja Geno Sensor manufactures medical kits and devices. processing samples in just 90 minutes and supplies them to top hospitals across India. I think uh, in last 5 uh, years there has been a uh, exponential change in the technology of the especially the medtech part because there is in lots of support from the government and uh, there has been number of patents which has been increased it means the innovation which has been done in last 5 to 10 years is uh, quite an high and uh, the most important thing that uh, india is become the make in india so the privilege of having your own manufacturing unit is also here so i think uh, there are lots of colleagues who are mine and we have started the journey together and now we almost uh, if i don't uh, count out of 10 there are six people are having our own manufacturing unit so this is how the if the medtech pharma is increasing in such a manner so i think uh, we will be having the most uh, employment generating uh, country of the world in next 10 years India is the fourth largest medical device market in Asia and among the top 20 globally this growth reflects the country's dynamic healthcare sector fueled by government initiatives technological advances like 3d printing and ai and rising demand for quality healthcare to further strengthen the industry The Department of Pharmaceuticals and the Confederation of Indian Industry organized Meditech Stackathon 2024, uniting industry leaders, policymakers, and innovators. Many countries from infectious communicable to the non-communicable diseases um, creates a demand for a range of medical devices to address both the preventive as well as the curative space. The next decade will be very crucial for the medtech sector with the continued economic growth reforms and the policy framework and the vibrant startup as well as the innovation ecosystem that we have India is really poised to reduce the import dependency The medtech sector is currently valued at 14 billion and is projected to grow by 28% annually reaching 50 billion by 2030. Additionally, initiatives like Make in India, the Production Linked Incentive Scheme, and Ayushman Bharat have boosted domestic production of medical devices and enhanced the global competitiveness of Indian products. With over 4,000 health tech startups driving innovation, India's medtech sector is set to transform healthcare delivery, focusing on both quality and affordability India is already called the pharmacy of the world uh you know we uh, have a very large pharmaceutical sector and uh, now they are growing in the biological and the biosimilar space uh, we also export now almost uh, provide almost half the vaccines requirement of WHO and UNICEF the next big thing is the meditech it is uh, a complex industry but now not far from our reach a uh, huge uh, number of uh, companies have come up there are 25 clusters there are about half a dozen medical device parks they have come up in all regions of the country and the the industry has uh, a great future and meditech is part of our future plans 
India's healthcare sector is rapidly expanding with new facilities emerging nationwide. As super specialty hospitals continue to rise, the demand for advanced healthcare equipment and technology is expected to drive significant growth in the medtech sector. India is witnessing a transformation in the farming sector, with farmers embracing not only new techniques and crops, but also adopting natural farming methods. In Gujarat, a western state of India, farmers are making remarkable strides in horticulture. Let's meet some of these progressive farmers and learn about their innovative approaches. In the heart of Gujarat, a quiet agricultural revolution is unfolding. Farmers, once reliant on chemical intensive methods, are now turning to natural and innovative farming solutions, reaping significant benefits from diversification. Ratilal Sethia, a traditional farmer from Bachao in Gujarat's Kutch, used to focus on growing groundnuts, cotton, cumin, and vegetables. However, after recognizing the harmful effects of many commonly used chemicals, he transitioned to organic farming in 2009. Embracing the jungle model of multi-cropping, he also began organic date farming in 2017. Today, his farm stands as a testament to the power of nature and sustainable practices as he grows multiple crops. This is jungle model. अभी ये खजूर का बाग है 2017 से लगाया उसके बीच में अमरुद भी है आम भी लगाया है केला भी है तो ये पूरा जंगल मॉडल है हम इसको फूड फॉरेस्ट्री बोलते हैं उसको एटीएम भी बोलते हैं कि खजूर तो साल में एक भर आती है अभी कभी बारिश आ गया कुछ भी डिस्टर्ब होता है तो किसान रुक जाता है उसका इनकम लॉस हो जाता है साल में एक बार आती है तो फिर साल भर पूरा बैठना पड़ता है किसान को खजूर तो मिलता है एक साल में नीचे उसका सीजन खत्म होने के बाद अपना अमरुद मिलता है उसके बाद अपना आम का भी मिलता है और केले भी है पपीते भी है वेजिटेबल से पूरा हम जगह कवर कर लेते हैं और पूरा जो नेचुरल फार्मिंग के जो पांच पिलर है हमारे तो वो हम उसको फॉलो करके पूरा ये डेवलप किया है और पूरा सालाना भर हमको इसमें पर एकड़ के हिसाब से अभी 12 से 15 लाख पर इनकम हमको हो रहा है राठीलाल हैज बिल्ट अ सक्सेसफुल ब्रांड ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक डेट्स विद हिज पार्टनर Hitesh Vora, who assists with marketing. Together, they supply fresh fruit directly to nearly 500 retailers under the farm to finger concept. If we don't do this system, what would happen? Our crop would be sold in the market, they would sell it 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 in the market, and they would sell it in the market. And in that case, the value adding is almost double. तो यहाँ हमको भी अच्छा दाम मिलता है और खास करके जो हमारे क्लाइंट है उसको सही दाम में सही प्रोडक्ट और डायरेक्ट फार्म टू फिंगर ऐसा हमारा कॉन्सेप्ट है कि फार्म से सीधा फिंगर मतलब अपना उंगली तक वो कॉन्सेप्ट से हम लोग काम करते हैं। Another example of innovation is Haresh Thakur's farm, which he has transformed into a dragon fruit haven alongside other crops. Inspired by a 2012 visit to Vietnam. He adopted dragon fruit farming and implemented drip irrigation techniques learned in Israel, along with the jungle model. Government support, particularly subsidies, have been a game changer for him. जब इतनी government support कर रही है, एक drip irrigation में support कर रही है कि drip irrigation में से 75 percent subsidy, dragon fruit आप कमलम फल लगाओ, तो उसमें तीन लाख से साढे तीन लाख रुपिया पर हेक्टर पे, पे सब्सिडी मिल रही है फलों में जब फल इसका आ गया और बॉक्स में जब पैकिंग करके ये मंडी में भेजा तो बॉक्स के लिए भी गवर्नमेंट सब्सिडी दे रही है गवर्नमेंट जैसे अपन बोले किसान को खंबे से खंबा मिला के खड़ी है कच्छ अ डेजर्ट रीजन इन गुजरात has immense potential for horticulture, with around 59,000 hectares already dedicated to fruit crop cultivation. Farmers, इतना थोड़ा अपने अपने को upgrade करने के लिए 
अलग अलग रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट में जाते हैं वहाँ से खेती सीखते हैं नई टेक्नोलॉजी के बारे में जानते हैं एडप्ट करते हैं कुछ फार्मर्स यहाँ ऐसे भी मिलेंगे कि जो एब्रॉड यानी कि कोई लोग इसराइल और दूसरे कंट्री में जाके वहाँ की खेती सीख के यहाँ का फार्मिंग भी इन्होंने इम्प्रूव किया है और ये सब चीज़ों को मिला के इनका एक्सट्रैक्ट निकाला जाए तो टेक्नोलॉजी एडप्शन लार्ज स्केल फार्मिंग जियोग्राफिकल डाइवर्सिटी ये सब चीज़ें होने से यहाँ का हॉर्टिकल्चर काफ़ी अच्छा बूम कर रहा है In many parts of India, agriculture is undergoing a significant transformation. Crop diversification, organic farming, and technology are driving this change, promising a healthier future for generations to come. As the festive season begins in India, the beauty of its celebrations lies in the unity among people of all faiths. and today we take you to ahmedabad city of gujarat where hindu traders and residents are flocking in to purchase rakhis or traditional wristbands from muslim artisans this heartwarming tradition highlights the festival spirit and strengthens bonds of unity and friendship stay tuned as we explore this touching celebration of togetherness as raksha bandhan is celebrated across india A heartwarming story of communal harmony unfolds. Although the festival has its roots in Hindu traditions, Muslim artisans in various parts of the country play an important role in making the celebration special. In the busy streets of Gujarat's Ahmedabad, a unique tradition takes place every year, where Hindu traders and customers come to Milatnagar, a predominantly Muslim neighborhood. to buy intricately designed rakhis this touching tradition has been a key part of the city's festive spirit for decades the rakhi makers of milatnagar are a symbol of hope their dedication to their craft and their willingness to contribute to the festive spirit of another community reminds us that unity and harmony can prevail यहाँ हर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट वैरायटी मिल जाती है और बहुत अच्छी तरह की वैरायटी मिलती है जो बाहर नहीं मिल पाती है और रेट भी बहुत अच्छा रहता है कि जो बाहर नहीं मिलता है और यहाँ आने के बाद ऐसा कंफ्यूज हो जाता है कि क्या ले और क्या ना ले मतलब बहुत डिफरेंट वैरायटी मिल जाती है यहाँ पर दोनों भाईचारा होता है क्योंकि मुस्लिम लोग है वो बनाते है उसकी दुआ होती है और हम उस हमारे भाइयों को बांधते है वो वो राखी हम सालों से यहीं से ले जाते हैं ऐसा है कि ये लोग बनाते हैं कि हिंदू मुस्लिम अलग अलग मगर ऐसा नहीं है वो दोनों मिलकर ही सब त्योहार बनाते हैं From the bustling markets of Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan to the small towns of Gujarat and West Bengal, Muslim families have been carefully crafting rakhis for generations, weaving each thread with care and a sense of shared purpose. The rakhis made in Milatnagar, Gujarat are famous not only for their beauty but also for their cultural significance. The artisans, many of whom come from families who have been making rakhis for generations, blend tradition and innovation in their designs. The tradition of Muslims making rakhis for a Hindu festival is more than just a business. It is a living example of how communities can come together, respecting and celebrating each other's beliefs and traditions. Here, for many years, rakhi. का काम होता है या साल के बारह महीने काम होता है और सीजन आने से पहले रक्षा बंधन के चार महीने पहले से हमारा होलसेल का धंधा भी चालू हो जाता है यहाँ पे फिर एक महीना जो बचता हमारा रिटेल का हम यहाँ पे पूरा मिल्लत नगर राखी का कारीगर स्पेशलिस्ट है सब और मुसलमान भाई बहने भी यहाँ पे सब बनाते हैं और हिंदू सब आते हैं यहाँ पे और खुशी खुशी सब ले भी जाते हैं अपनी कौमी एकता सब बने रहे ये अपनी शुभेच्छा है रक्षा बंधन अ फेस्टिवल दैट सिम्बलाइज द प्रोटेक्शन एंड लव बिटवीन ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स हैज बिकम अ टेस्टमन टू इंडिया डाइवर्सिटी एंड इंक्लूसिवनेस 
The rakhis made by Muslim artisans for the Hindu celebration are a powerful example of how diversity can unite us, showing the magic that happens when different communities work together in harmony. Now, let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. On July 12, the Olympic flag made its grand arrival in Los Angeles aboard a Delta Airlines jet adorned with LA-28 and iconic palm trees. As to Park Shakur's anthem, California Love Eco through Los Angeles International Airport, the excitement for the 2028 Summer Games was palpable. This will mark the third time that Los Angeles will be hosting the Olympics, having previously done so in 1932 and 1984. The city's blend of historic charm and modern flair promises a spectacular celebration of athleticism and culture. Accountant Charity Manley is already dreaming of joining the festivities, eager to be part of the global event that celebrates unity and excellence. Awarded the Games by the International Olympic Committee in 2017, LA is set to deliver an unforgettable experience, blending its vibrant spirit with the timeless tradition of the Olympics. The countdown has officially begun for this iconic global event. India's textile heritage is rich with tradition and innovation. And Bhavan Bhuti of 52 Motifs is a standout masterpiece of handloom artistry. Once adorning the walls of India's presidential palace, this exquisite craft from Bihar state faced decline but is now being revived. Join us on a journey to explore the intricate world of Bhavan Bhuti and the dedicated artisans preserving this cultural heritage. Nestled in the heartland of India, a unique art form has been quietly weaving its story for centuries, Bhavan Bhuti, or 52 motifs. This traditional handloom technique showcases the enduring spirit of Indian craftsmanship with its rich history and intricate designs, often used to create saris, bedsheets and curtains. Local weavers believe the name Bhavan Bhuti holds historical significance, potentially dating back to the era of Lord Buddha. During Dr. Rajendra Prasad's presidency, curtains woven in Bihar's Baswan Biga village adorned the president house in New Delhi, highlighting the esteemed status of Bhavan Bhuti in Indian heritage. However, the prominence of these handloom products diminished over time due to the advent of power looms and changing market dynamics. On the verge of extinction, Bhavan Bhuti was revived by the late Kapil Dev Prasad. His dedication to preserving this intricate weaving technique earned him the Padma Shri, the fourth highest civilian award in India, ensuring that Bhavan Bhuti's legacy endures. गोपा मैडम है जो पटना में रहते हैं वो इनको देखे उनके पिताजी इस काम को इस कला को वो बहुत अच्छे से करते थे तो उन्होंने पता लगाया कि इस तरह का काम कहां होता है उनको पता मिला कि एक कपिल जी हैं वो बिहार से बसवन इधर में काम करते हैं वो जुड़े और फिर से इसको रिबैक किया फिर से बहुत जगह इनका प्रचार प्रसार दिखाए बताया फिर वहां से फिर से ये डेवलप हुआ और फिर से काम नहीं हुआ The hallmark of Bhavan Bhuti lies in its handcrafted designs. Unlike power loom products, each piece is meticulously woven by hand. Weavers use a graph to outline designs, ranging from traditional motifs to contemporary patterns. This meticulous process involves frequently stopping to manually thread the designs, ensuring each piece is unique and embodies the weaver's artistry. 
Vivekanand Prasad, a practitioner and younger brother of Kapil Dev Prasad, emphasizes the purity of the handloom technique, where every design is crafted without powered machinery. This method preserves the traditional art form and adds a personal touch to each creation. Interest from companies like Reliance and Fab India has brought a renewed recognition to this craft. ये हाथ से डिजाइन बनाना होता है जैसे अब तो मशीन से पावर लूम से लोग बनाते हैं तो वो डेकार्ट मशीन होता है वो अपने आप ही बन जाता है सिर्फ मशीन चालू किया और बन गया लेकिन इसमें हाथ से बनाया बनाना होता है एक एक धागा जो इसमें यह भी चिड़िया बनाए तो इसमें एक एक धागा मशीन को रोक के डालना होता है हैंडलूम होता है इसको मशीन नहीं बोल सकते हम जो भी अगर को, कोई भी ग्राफ हो उसी से डिजाइन करना होता है India's handcrafted products, like Bhavan Bhuti, are gaining global recognition through online promotion and international exhibitions. Each handcrafted piece requires painstaking effort and dedication, reflecting the passion of the weavers who have preserved this tradition. Bhavan Bhuti is more than just a weaving technique. It represents India's rich cultural heritage and the resilience of its artisans. India boasts numerous ancient temples, but temples of Odisha stand out for their unique grandeur and preserved architectural splendor. Notable among them is Jagannath Puri, a key site in the Chardham pilgrimage, and the historic temples of Bhubaneswar, which draw millions of tourists annually. Orisha in eastern India is celebrated for its rich cultural heritage and ancient temples known for their exceptional architecture. The Jagannath Temple in Puri is the most prominent, a major Hindu pilgrimage site and part of the Char Dham, the four sacred pilgrimage sites in India. Notably, the temple's flag is said to flutter against the wind adding to the many mysteries and stories that inspire millions of devotees. यहां का जो मंदिर है वो मंदिर बड़ा प्राचीन मंदिर है ऐसे इस मंदिर शिल्प शास्त्र के अनुसार ये पंचरथ का मंदिर है और नमय कोष मनमय कोष प्राणमय कोष जीवमय कोष सारे समग्र यौगिक चिंताधारा से यह मंदिर बना हुआ है मंदिर के ऊपर ध्वजा उड़ता है इस ध्वजा में एक सिंबल है नाद और बिंदु इसको दर्शन करने से मनुष्य को साजुज्य मुख्य प्राप्त होता है Each year, a grand chariot festival takes place here, drawing millions of devotees. The chariot used in the festival is made of wood and adorned with intricate decorations. Daily, many devotees visit the temple to immerse themselves in the devotion to Lord Jagannath. यहाँ पर आके बहुत आनंद मिलता है। प्रभु के जब से यहाँ पे तीन चार दिन से मैं हूँ रोज एक बार तो दर्शन कभी कभी बीच में दो दो बार भी करने का सौभाग्य प्राप्त हुआ भगवान जगन्नाथ स्वामी जी की और जो यहाँ पे ये भगवान का ध्वज जो चढ़ाया जाता है ये इसको देखने का जो आनंद है वो कहीं पर भी नहीं मिलेगा आपको बोलो जगन्नाथ स्वामी की जय हम सब लोग यहाँ पे जगन्नाथ टेंपल में दर्शन करने आए थे यहाँ का आर्किटेक्चर बहुत ही यूनिक है और बहुत ही सुंदर दर्शन हुए और हम लोग को बहुत अच्छा लगा यहाँ आकर के और बहुत मज़ा आया जय जगन्नाथ Bhubaneswar, Orisha's capital, is known as the city of temples due to its many ancient temples with unique architecture. Notable among them are Parasurameshwar, Deityeshwar, Rajrani, and Mukteshwar, all renowned for their intricate craftsmanship and distinctive sculptures. The Lingaraj Temple, dedicated to Lord Shiva and dating back to the 11th century, is also famous for its Kalinga architecture. The surrounding smaller temples further enhance its significance. 
Ishan temples, all of them were made with royal patronage. The rajas of the day, the emperors of the day, the ruling potentates, you know, they commissioned it. Yes, one of the reason for Orishan temples existing and existing so long is that they were solidly built of local materials, which mostly was, you know, laterite stone, condorite stone, sandstone, you know. Uh, the abundance of availability of quarries where this happened and uh, a multitude of rivers by way which these big stone blocks could be transported floated down that made it very convenient. These ancient Arisha temples exemplify the remarkable architecture of ancient India, ensuring their enduring sturdiness. They serve as centers of faith, religious tourism, and a source of national pride in our cultural heritage. While the temples of Odisha are magnificent, the beautiful beaches here are also major attractions. Visitors can enjoy beaches like Golden Beach and Naladri Beach in Puri, which offer breathtaking sea views after exploring the temples. Located a few miles from the Jagannath Puri temple, Golden Beach is renowned for its golden sand and clear water. It has earned the Blue Flag Certificate for its high standards of cleanliness and environmental management. The beach offers excellent facilities, providing a comfortable environment where visitors can enjoy the sea waves. So it's a long way from Hyderabad to Puri uh, to uh, visit Jagannath, Jagannath Ji. Our uh, Jagannath Ji has been good for us. And after that, we came to the beach for a little bit of laser. Ke liye, and this is so beautiful, it's good with family, ke saath aaya, we are uh, doing great and enjoying here. When people come to this beach, they come to this beach and people come to this beach. The reason behind it is that we have made some ticketing system, we have kept the price for some entry. Because we give some facilities, such as you have to drink water for drinking, you have to get a toilet, you have to get a sour facility, you have to get a toilet, you have to get a toilet, and you have to get a beach. Adjacent to Golden Beach is Niladri Beach, a favorite spot for tourists with its magnificent sea view and a selfie point for capturing memories. Families can relax and enjoy their time here. Both beaches are renowned for their natural beauty and cleanliness, enhancing the tourism experience in Puri. Odisha's ancient temples and scenic beaches offer visitors tranquil experience and mesmerizing serious stars, making temple explorations even more enriching. And with that, it's a wrap on today's episode of My India, but we will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.